Hi guys, so today's video is going to be kind of like a part two of the video I just posted about end times and the book of life dream that I had. Because um, I got quite a few messages just saying that people were scared that it's too late for them. So the topic is, it's not too late. Um, so I want to explain why it's not too late. Because I can just easily say that. And people are like, okay, but like, why isn't it too late? So um, I'm going to refer back to the passage I used in the last video, which is Mark 13. That whole chapter, but specifically verses 32 to 37 when Jesus is talking about no one knows the day or hour and be ready because I don't want to find you sleeping. Like, don't let me find you sleeping. So, um, um, God gives us second chances. He's not just going to like, oh, you sinned. That's it. That's it. You're going to hell. He gives us second chances. Like, that's why he died on the cross so that we could ask forgiveness for our sins. And in Luke... Um, chapter 13 in verses 6 through 9 it says then he told this parable this is Jesus talking a man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard when he went to look for fruit on it but did not find any he said to the man who took care of the vineyard for three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any cut it down why should I use this soil sir the man replied leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it if it bears fruit next year, fine. Then cut it down if not. So basically the man saying leave it alone for one more year represents Jesus and we are the tree. And so if you're maybe a Christian and you haven't been living your life for God completely, or if you have never been a Christian and you're just not living your life from God, then you're that tree that's not bearing any fruit. But God is giving you another chance. So take this and go from there and start making those changes in your life. Ask God in your heart. Ask forgiveness for sins because he's giving you another chance. So show him that you can bear fruit and start living your life for him because it's so, so worth it. So the next problem is, okay, how do I start making those changes in my life? Like, what do I do now that I know I'm supposed to make the changes? And now that I know it's not too late, what do I do? So the first thing I want to say to you is pray because God tells us to pray so many times. And in James 1, 5, let me get to it. James 1, 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. So God flat out says, ask for wisdom and pray and ask God to open your eyes to the sins that you're doing so that you can start to change them. And in Romans 12, 2, in NIV version, it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So do not conform to this world, meaning like don't do everything the world does just because it's popular. Like for an example, modesty. I might see someone wearing this certain outfit and I'm like, you know, that looks really cute. And I wish I could wear that, but I'm not allowed. And then I'm like, wait a minute. No, it's not that I'm not allowed. It's because that wouldn't be honoring God. And you need to recognize those things. And maybe if you don't see those things, then pray that God would open your eyes to such things. And pray the prayer, search me. And God will search you. And he will point out the things in your life that are not honoring him. And when he does, you need to change those things and work on those things. Ask for strength and change those things about yourself so that you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind and you need to totally change the way you think maybe I know I did and I still need to um but from even being your first response prayer instead of texting your friend oh my goodness guess what so-and-so did maybe pray about it be like god this really hurt me and frustrated me and I'm not happy with this person help me to have a better attitude about this and have your first response as prayer because that is so helpful <laughs> the next way is to read your bible like god literally gave us this whole entire book like it's a big book like <laughs> that's a big book of instructions for us and examples how we should live our life he tells us what not to do and do this instead 
So like use this. God gave this to you because he knew it was going to be hard. He knew living a life for him would be hard on this earth. So use his word and read it every day. Memorize it so that when you are tempted, you have this sword to fight off Satan and those temptations. Another really big thing is getting rid of things and people in your life that may be dragging your da- dragging you down. In Matthew 5.30, it says, And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. So basically that's saying if someone or something is causing you to sin, get rid of it. And if it's a person, which a lot of times it is, it might be hanging around with non-Christian friends, maybe distance yourself from those friends because they aren't going to help you. They're just dragging you down. And that might be hard and it will be hard, but it's very important to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with Christian friends and not people who are going to constantly be bringing you down. And with that, it's important to meet with Christian friends and do this together because we are not called to do this alone. We're called to do it with other members of the family of Christ. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So don't not go to church just because you're tired. Get out of bed. Do it as duty and get involved in your church because you're going to need that when you fall into temptation. You're going to need those people to spur you on and you're going to need all of that. It's so important. Going back to the thing with non-Christian friends, 1 Corinthians 15 33 says, do not be misled. Bad company corrects good character. And Romans, t- oh no, Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So both of those verses, um, I don't know if you've ever heard the example, but if you put a good fresh apple with a bad rotten apple, the rotten apple will overcome the good apple and make it rotten. And that's what happens when you hang out with bad people and non-Christian people. Like, not that you can't be a witness to them, because that's important too, but maybe from a distance, a safe distance, a loving distance, but don't drag yourself down just to hang out with this person, because they're going to influence you more than you're probably going to be influencing them. So with all that being said, I just want to encourage you that I will pray for you if you message me on Instagram or leave a comment or something. I will be gladly praying for you guys. And if you have more questions, um, message me on Instagram. I'll leave it in the description so you can follow me and message me. But I just encourage you, again, as I did in last video, to not wait any longer and go start making those things right. Because there is a day that it'll be too late when God comes back. So change those things now so that it's not too late. Because right now it's not. You have another chance. So take your next chance.